Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, it's Kira. Today I wanted to cover a very fascinating part of scripture and that is Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, which if you know is where, you know, the sense of what people call like the ideal wife or ideal woman comes from in scripture. And I wanted to break that down because I think we can look at this passage and pull out ideas that weren't necessarily um, written by the author. And so I wanted to break this down today. Um, this passage fascinates me um, and there's so much packed into it. And I think we need to really take time to study and to know what is being said to us so we can understand what the Lord is saying through this scripture. Um, so to begin, um, Proverbs 10, sorry, Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 says this, an excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than rubies. The heart of her husband trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. Now, starting this off, I'm going to break this down almost verse by verse, but setting the stage for all of this. So we are in Proverbs 31, which was written by King Lemuel. And Bible scholars don't really know who he is. They think he might be an Arab king, but there's not enough proof of that. Um, but basically, this is King Lemuel. And it's not him writing this. Instead, it's actually his mom who's writing this for him and saying, hey, when you're looking for a wife, look for these qualities. And it's also worth noting that this is an acrostic poem written in Hebrew. And so this would have been like an A, B, C, and then, you know, whatever she's saying off of that. And the reason why this was done was so that he could remember easier. Because you look at these 21 verses, I don't have this memorized. And so done acrostically, it would have been easier to remember and remind yourself of. So obviously, she had the intentions of making this super easy for him um, to understand and to just carry with him as he is looking for a wife. And I also want it to be noted that as she's looking for, or she's telling her son, this is what I want you to look for, um, she's singing this out of wisdom. You know, it's not that King Lemuel is writing about here are all my, you know, expectations of a wife. This is mom writing it for him and saying, look, be wise. And this is what she's telling him. This is a woman saying this too, um, which I think should be noted in scripture that this is not some guy giving like high lofty expectations that can never be met or sh we should all try to attain. Like this is a woman writing this for her son. And if you think about from a mom's perspective of like, as you look for a future wife, future spouse, look for these things and I think that gives a good framework to go into it. So also remember, this was written around 700 BC. So this was a very, very, very long time ago. And customs were different, which we will get into. It says, an excellent wife who can find her. She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband, husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. And this is interesting because... His mom is pointing out, look, this woman is someone that you can trust completely, which during ancient times, you probably would have not had that expectation of your spouse, but also you wouldn't have been required to give that either. Um, and she's saying, uh, you will have no lack of gain. That basically, you know, whoever you get married to, there's gonna be a certain gain involved. And that doesn't mean necessarily monetarily or financially but that you're going to be better together than if you were apart. That there's going to be so much to be gained from this union, from this marriage. It says, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. They're like, this woman is for him. They are in this together. They're doing life. They're walking together. This wife is for him. And we would assume the opposite of he is for her as well. It says, she see... She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She is like the ships of a merchant. She brings her food from afar. 
Now, <laughs> what does this mean for us today? Not that we need to all go out and buy flax and start sewing and creating yarn. This would have been culturally what was done at the time. You are not probably going to buy ready-made clothes that would have been incredibly expensive. And probably only if you're royalty or very, very, very high up in society would you ever think of doing that. Everybody else made their own clothes. <laughs> and so that's what she's doing. That she is seeking out these items to clothe her family, which will be discussed later on. She's caring for her family. And so what does it mean for us today? How are you caring for those in your life? This woman is making sure her family has what they need. That's what she's doing. So if you do that by finding healthy recipes, if you do that by, you know, finding good restaurants that do good takeout, I mean, come on, like everyone has their own path in life that the Lord has given them. And so however you take care of your family, you take care of your family. It says that she rises while it is still yet night. This woman is productive. Um, she's not lazy. Now, <laughs> this is not to say that you should never sleep, that you um, should be a workaholic, but it's showing that she knows the things she has to get done. She has a list, so when she rises early, she's getting a head start. And I'm not saying we all need to rise in the middle of the night and do this. I don't. But... This is her perspective on things. She's not sleeping until noon and then just watching TV. Like this woman is actively working. It says she provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. Now this can also be translated servants. Um, and she's making sure that everyone in her household, whether family or not, they're taken care of. That they have adequate necessities. It says she considers a field and buys it, and with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Now, this is extremely, extremely fascinating to me. It says she considers a field and buys it. Right here, there's no mention of her husband. She's doing this alone. She's surveying a field and buying it. Let this be clear that this is during a time when many women around the world were probably not able to own property by themselves, that if they had anything when they got married, um, it was all put in their husband's name. And it didn't come from them necessarily, it came from you know, a dowry or something that came from their family. Um, even at this point in time, if like your parents passed away, um, anything left as an inheritance would be given to your brothers. <laughs> Girls would not inherit anything unless there were only daughters and then in which case that money or that property or whatever would be given to the husband of that daughter. Um, so this is during a time where like the fact that she's going out and buying her own land <laughs> would just be a shock. Like this would be like, whoa, her husband's letting her do that. Like what does she think she's doing? And it says with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. This woman... <laughs> is very very wise she has a real sense for business and is able to see if something's a good deal and buys it and plants a vineyard and profits from that it would have produced wine it could have produced um extra to sell like there was much profit in this but the fact that it, it doesn't say anything about her husband being part of this transaction says volumes about how much her husband trusts her and allows her to do in the family. This would have been unheard of. And actually in America up until 1900, not every state even allowed women to have their own money um, or property in their name up until 1900, like 122 years ago, guys. So the fact that this is 700 BC and her husband is letting her go out and do this is astounding and shows the leniency he gives her and believes in her and trusts in her to make this huge economically decisive decision. It says she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. She knows what <laughs> she has and whether she's selling things from her vineyard, whether this is clothing, we don't know, 
but whatever she is selling in the market, she knows it's valuable. It's of quality. She's not shortchanging anyone. She is not cutting corners. She has made the best product she can and she knows that. And it says that her merchandise is profitable. So people are coming and buying it. Um, it says her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. These would have been instruments to weave, um, to sew back in the day. So she's a busy woman, like she's not very idle. She's not sitting around. Like she knows the work that she's been given to do and she's all in it. It says she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. So not only is she really providing economically um, for her household, she's also providing um, for the poor and the needy where she is at. She's not just thinking about herself and everyone who relies directly upon her. She is also thinking about those around her and extending her arm and being generous which I think speaks volumes to who we are called to be today. I think about the fruits of the spirit, which none of these things are like directly it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But I think what we are seeing her do is seeing the fruits of the spirit in action. You can see love through what she's doing. You can see joy um, in the upcoming verses and how she speaks, self-control, and just how she manages her time. Um, the list goes on and on. And it says, she is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Um, the, a better translation of this would be like a double fabric, not necessarily the fabric being a scarlet cover, a color, excuse me, but that it's uh, doubly thick so it'd be super warm and keep them warm during the colder months it says the bed coverings she makes bed coverings for herself her clothing is fine linen and purple this woman is wearing very fine clothes and to get that purple color would have been extremely expensive during this time so she's obviously a woman who has financial and monetary means um and that's not every Christian woman and that's totally fine but showing the profits of her labor paying off and for her it's not necessarily how much money can I make but I think we're seeing like her planting a vineyard her doing all these things to care for her family to care for her community um and we're just seeing a bit of a byproduct for her personally that as she's doing all this work that she's dressed in linen and purple it says her husband is known at the gates basically meaning he was probably high up and well-known and well-liked. says where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. This is what she's clothed with, not physically, but spiritually. That she has both strength and dignity. That she's a woman who is strong, she is really doing so much for her community, for her family. And she does it with this poise and dignity that um, in my translation in the ESV, it says that she laughs at the time to come. Other translations say she laughs without fear of the future. Basically, she's not afraid of whatever's gonna come. And that can be because she's put her trust in God and she's done her part to make sure her household is ready for the next season, for the things that she knows is coming up in life. And there are things in life we don't know are coming up and that is out of our control, but the things we do know and are expecting, we can prepare for it and we can give the rest to God and trust and not fear the future. She looks well, oh sorry, she opens her mouth with wisdom and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. When she speaks, this is what flows from her. She's not idle in her words. She's not gossiping as she's doing all of this. It says her mouth is full of wisdom and her teaching of kindness is on her tongue. These are the two words that describe the language that she uses. When people come and talk to her, they know that she's gonna give good advice. She's gonna do so with love. So she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, she doesn't sit around. This woman 
has her tasks to do, she does them and does not put them off. Her husband, or sorry, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. So not only is this what the mom is saying King Lemuel's wife should look like, but that this woman should also be the kind of person that garners the respect and praise from her family, from her husband. And this is what her husband says, praising her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, vain but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. She's not praising herself. It's what she's doing that is making a statement. And we can see that throughout these 20 verses that that is what's happening. And I think this is crucial when diving into this, that um, this is a woman who stands out, that this is like a woman who is among rubies, basically meaning like she's very, very rare. So that does not mean that we need to do all these, but I think we can look at this as modern women today and see how the fruit of the spirit are at play in every area of her life. There's no area that's exempt from how the Lord is working in her and through her, how she speaks, <laughs> how she cares for her family, how she cares for her staff. Um, it is all sown through there, that she's doing it with love and joy and peace, because she does not fear. Um, she has gentleness, she has self-control. And to see those play out in different ways is so fascinating. And I think if we can view these verses in that light of this is not some crazy expectation of like everything that we need to do. I don't think the Lord is calling you to like spin linen unless that's like really a part of your life then you do that. But that's definitely not a part of my life. But I look at this and I can say, okay, how can I let the Lord shape me in my heart and the Holy Spirit work through me in my home, in how I provide for my family, in how I treat others, how I treat people in my community, how I treat those who are in need, um, you know, how I look towards the needs that I see arising in our family, but also at the same time, not fearing the future, not fearing the what ifs, giving those to the Lord, but taking care of what I can take care of. And I could go through this all again, but with that framework in mind, um, as we read this and just allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Um, number one, God wrote this book. <laughs> he gave it to us. And so we should feel totally confident in coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, we don't understand something. Help us to understand what you're saying through here. Because we can read this and interpret it 500 ways. I went to Bible college. <laughs> I majored in religion. I have seen people interpret scripture so many ways. And so it's really been something where I've had to come to the Lord and say, Lord, like I, I could see either one of these ways making sense and maybe both of them do and you're okay with either translation. Um, but Lord, what are you saying? What do you want us to hear from this? Because we can read this one way. Um, but we want to hear things and understand things the way that the Lord intended us to, um, which requires prayer. And it reminds me in Matthew where the Lord says, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open unto you. That as we seek the Lord in reading his word and understanding it, that we know that he's going to share with us that his spirit is at work in us teaching us <laughs> and showing us what he meant when he gave us this book because there is so much wisdom, so much knowledge, so much truth, and so much love packed in these pages for us to not just read, but to take to heart, to understand and work out in our lives. And also it says that this is um, God breathed and so it's living. And it's amazing what happens when you read with the Holy Spirit and you just understand <laughs> things in a different light. Or you can read the same passage like 20 times and you read it again and something else hits you. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit in the Bible and just working through the words of God. And so that's a bit of a tangent, but uh, I say all that because 
you don't need to be a Bible scholar. I felt called <laughs> to go and get my degree in religion, but if you got your degree in anything else or you didn't get a degree, hey, um, this is not just for me to understand. This is not for just theologians to understand. Um, this is for all of us to understand. This is for God to speak through the Holy Spirit in us to help us understand what he is saying. And I want that to be abundantly clear. Like, I love studying scripture. I'm very passionate about it. But I am not like... <laughs> like I'm not like a, an authority figure in this like the Lord is the authority figure and we go to him and we ask for wisdom in how to understand what he's written to us so that's my spiel <laughs> um if you have any questions comments please share them down below um I love these studies I love digging into scripture and I love just having conversations with people we actually did this um, passage in a Bible study that we have through Flourish Sisterhood this past week. So if you are a lady and you would like to join, um, comment on our Instagram at Flourish Sisterhood um, and we will get you connected with the Zoom link. Um, it's at 7 p.m. Pacific Senior Time on Wednesdays and since it's on Zoom, you can join us from anywhere. Um, we are international. Um, we have ladies popping on. Um, from different countries, which is so fun that we all get to meet together and we get to pray and we get to know each other and we get to study scripture. And it's a joy to hear from everyone and what their takeaways are and what really stood out to them and what the Holy Spirit's talking on their heart. And so that's my shameless plug. <laughs> Go check it out. It's awesome. I'll leave it in the description down below. And we would love to have you hop on and join um, our girl gang and get to know God better together. So that's all. Thank you for sticking with me through this longer video. I hope you have an incredible week and that you can just take some time with the Lord in scripture and get to know him better through his word. And I love y'all so much. Have an amazing week.